Installing siding, exterior trim, and furring strips over thick foam isn't all that tricky or difficult until you get to corners. And on the front of this garage shop, we've got a lot of corners. We've got outside corners here, we've got inside corners, we've got big door openings, we've got a cantilever here for a window opening, and we also meet the soffit up at the top. So that's where it comes time to, you know, really do your planning and figure out how you're going to work this thing. So we're here with Justin. We had a couple guys up here working. Looks like they've got all the foam on outside here. Um, they've got furring strips up. Looks like there's a couple of methods they've used on the furring strips because we have two types of siding here. We've got shingles finally going up, um, some sort of a belly band or a water table here, and then we're going to have fiber cement lap siding on down below. What am, what am I missing? What's important here in this assembly that we're looking at? Well, the, the biggest takeaway so far, Dan, has just been that the details on something, even as small as this garage face, have just been overwhelming. It takes a little while. Yeah, to a, lot of, a lot of planning. Yeah. Um, it's very complicated to get everything figured out. So as you mentioned, we have fiber cement lap siding down here. For that, we, as we mentioned in the last episode, you can use vertical furring strips. These okay. are the one inch thickness built up out of two pieces of half inch plywood. Yep. We have a horizontal piece here. That's going to be our five quarter by six flat stock. It's going to be our our kind of apron. That's going to continue across and become underneath the window there. That'll meet up with our window. We're going to have a sill that projects out. This is just a piece of flashing we have mocked up to just kind of give the idea. We have a quarter inch space and then the shingles start. Right. So now the shingles require much more backing and in different ways because of the way they fasten to the wall. So we use the story stick to set up horizontal strips over the vertical strips. And these are every five inches on center. And that matches up with our five inch on center nailing pattern. Okay. Now, since we've never done shingles on a corner before, we were kind of winging it with the concept. Um, I've already, even doing this much, I already know what I would do different next time. So what you can't see behind these shingles is that what we did was these are pieces right here are going to be for the corner, the corner boards down below for the lap siding. Yep. So up above here, to these horizontal strips at the five inches on center for the nailing of these uh, the shingles, but ended up being kind of wimpy nailing here in the corner. You can see right here, I have to keep my nails pretty far back because okay. there's nothing here. So on the other side, I think what we're going to do is actually bring this out yeah. and then fasten these two together. And then you'll have nice solid... Got solid backing. I still got drainage back behind here. Airflow. And I think at that point, it's going to be weaving corners just like if it was a, a solid corner wall. Okay. So now for back here, because we're going to have that horizontal apron and then our sill sticking out, we wanted to have solid nailing here. Okay. But we also wanted to maintain, because we're not going to have our drainage point right here, we wanted it to be continuous. So this flashing here that's going to go over the sill, it's only flashed to the back of the siding, not all the way to the wall. So you're going to keep a complex three-dimensional airflow network going on yes. within the wall. Joe would be very proud of us. Yeah. You see right here that it's completely continuous. So we'll end up with a vent at the top and a drainage slash vent all the way down at the bottom. Nothing okay. in between. And so at the bottom, I see we've got an insect screen tucked behind the furring strips and it's going to tuck up in front so the siding will cover that. Yeah, and we stole a little detail from Mike Girton here. He showed us that instead of just folding the screen up and stapling it off, we kind of rolled it over and it creates almost like a gasket effect. When okay. you put the trim up, it kind of, it'll seal that gap against it the backside of the trim. Great, and makes it harder for bugs to get in and we don't want bugs back there. Right. So coming around this corner up top, we'll have woven shingles like on the other corner and you're going to have the same problem without solid backing. Um, down here, we'll have our belly band and then we'll have a solid corner board. Um, and I think we just decided we would pre-assemble the corner, it'll be bigger than this, so that we won't have to fasten, worry about how to fasten the outsides here. We'll just have a, a larger corner board coming here and we'll be able to just go right into this solid furring. Right, keeps it straight. Air. And we come around, there'll be siding here, uh, trim for the door and the door opening we can see is, uh, is completely flashed with some sort of blue peel and stick membrane. It's actually, this is actually interesting because we're not going to, because we don't have any room up top for a head casing, we're not going to do side casing either. 
Okay. So what we're going to do here is a flat piece of fiber cement soffit board, which is about a quarter inch thick. It will also come out across the top here and then the shingles siding will come down and overlap this edge. So it'll appear like the, the whole head is, is part of the siding right. and the doors will just be built in. Right. Um, and, a, and sill flashing down there. Yep, and you notice that we overlapped the foundation. We came down over the concrete here. We just wanted to separate the building from the not building as much as possible. Correct. We get over here and we have the insect screen again, yep. as we did on the other side, you, which this, will roll. Yep, this we haven't rolled up yet. And we have insect screen up here too, above, or just below the window so that water draining out can get out and, and bugs can't get in. Right, and now this is a spot where, you know, we get picky. This is, this is the kind of job where you need to tap into your inner perfectionist and really really go the extra mile because you'll notice here that this is going to be a solid board and then you'll have the windowsill coming out over the top. The same solid board that's going to go carry across the whole front of the building. Okay. But since we we have a vent down here because even the smallest spots need ventilation, what we don't have room for is a vent at the top because of where the sill's going to be. So, we left these a half inch down so that any air back here can circulate over to the Up full height cha channels over on the sides and still still be fully ventilated. Okay. So even the small spots need to have an intake and exhaust or horizontal movement to, that connects to intake and exhaust. And if we were talking to the video editor right now, we would tell him to bring this detail up and show that to the folks at home who are watching. You also noticed that we clearly had some issues staying plumb while working over this foam. Well, I hadn't noticed that, but now, now that you point <laughs> now it Now that out, I'm pointing it. It's pretty clear that you did. So you've got these little shims between the two. Yeah. It appears that you just compressed the heck out of this foam. Well, even when you suck in those screws to put in these little furring strips, that really pushes down. And you can see that if I stuck to just the foam, you can see how far out I am. So what we did was we found it hard to shim between the strips and the foam. So I put the first one up and just let it be out of plumb, then shim between the two. Oh man. And ended up coming plumb. Was the foam plumb when you put it up at the first place? I yes. Mean, is the framing right? But you don't have it. <laughs> yes, the framing's right. The problem is that the, the foam is not necessarily consistent. When you go between pieces, it has subtle differences. So, I mean, is, did this happen all over these bigger walls or is it just because this is such a small piece of foam that it really compressed more easily because there was less room for it to... Um... It's not a problem in the middle of the foam. When you get towards the edges and okay. the bottoms and on short sections where it's, it's the solid sill meets soft okay. foam, there's then just that less, becomes... less room for it to spread out. Sure. And, yeah. and it's, it's all... Yeah. Concentrated on one spot. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's a relief. I'm I'm glad you don't have to go do this on every single strip on on a big wall because no. you're never going to make any money doing that. No. <laughs> so at the top of this, we've got some head flashing, and it's cut into the foam. Yeah. It appears to be cut into the foam. So where our where our shingles meet the clapboard siding, we just talked about. You need to have full ventilation going all the way back between behind it. When you get to the top of a window, you don't have that luxury right? Mm -hmm. So we needed to put in head flashing and we found that the best way to do that was to actually take a circular saw, cut a groove in the foam, cut a groove in the foam. slide the, the rigid metal flashing up into it, caulk it, and then fold down this weather tape before the first layer before of furring strips goes strips. on. So anything gets behind the siding, it comes down here and is, is kicked out, Right, protects the window. Nothing can get in behind the foam. Down here is going to be fiber cement, um, clabbards. We'll have an exterior corner here. Up here we'll have shingles and we'll run across with the fiber cement again. We've got blocked out for sconces, it appears. So that's good that we took the time to figure out where those go. I guess one of the smart things that we did, one of the smart things that we did is we used the same thickness of foam as one and a half inch framing lumber so we can get blocking up real easily without planing it down with yes. a portable planer. Yeah. And then so coming around, we've got our corner here and I see a whole bunch of writing on these uh, furring strips. What's what 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 are what what, what do the marks mean? For well us? we set up we set up a laser on a tripod 
a couple feet back here and we struck one level line across the whole building. That's going to be the top of our five quarter by six. Okay. Skirt board. Um, and window then, trim. And then we correlated that to a story stick and used it to lay out the courses of siding. So these are the level. bottoms of each right. shingle course? These are all five inches apart. That ends up being the butt of each course of shingles, and the X represents where the nails are going to go when we fasten those shingles. Right. So those horizontal pieces are going to go there, just like in the other corner. All right, and then I see over here we got all of this gra or this, this granite pulled off of the outside. Um, haven't really cleaned up this side so much, so we'll keep it off camera for now. So we're making good progress here, and uh, it's maybe a little slower than we hoped, but you know, that's, that's what happens when you get real cut up walls. What have we learned this week, Justin? Well, to that point, Dan, what used to be the rough stage of building a house or doing a remodel, the framing, if you do it this way, it absolutely is, is the details that count. This is as fussy as finished carpentry, and it matters. So definitely what we've learned is sweat the details. Sweat the details on yeah. the framing. Yep. And, um, and that small pieces of foam compress. <laughs> so that's it for this week. Uh, tune in next time. We'll be setting those doors. And after that, we're going to insulate, drywall, add a subfloor, and build some cabinets inside for our table saw. Until then, so long from the Fine Home Building Project House.